Hey you guys, it is Jim. We are here with Jeannie T. Arrigo, aka Barushka, and our amazing, wonderful, hit, huge, cool production of Once, which you just came out of a Wednesday just came, Yes, the makeup's a little heavy. This is not my regular street makeup. <laughs> That's so funny because we saw her this morning walking in with the exact same no. makeup. So, <laughs> but look, dude, so congratulations. Thanks. I am so happy to be here. I had never auditioned for Paramount before because I was sort of, you know, petrified of, of it. I mean, it's huge and it also seemed really far away. It's only really 45, 46 miles from the city. But when this came up, I'm like, I have to, because I had auditioned for this a couple of times previous for the first national tour. I had had a call back for that and, uh, you know, didn't get it, but that was the last time I played accordion prior to here. And by the way, you don't <laughs> just play accordion, you play uh, fiddle, mandolin, guitar on top of everything else. Yeah. So, uh, and the other thing is, like, the production is so rich because I keep talking about the fact of, Nick, one minute you're laughing, one minute you're crying. You walk out with all these different emotions and, you know, motivated and thought provoked and yeah. all those things. And it's cool to watch audience members of all ages walk out and just have that impact that you guys are so having. So true. And, and what's it feel like having that when you guys are on stage? Well, I think much of the time we're experiencing that ourselves, right. you know, we're experiencing it and just, you know, I've been an audience member in shows that move me and I know, and I've been, you can't really see the audience here because it's, the lights are so bright, but I've been in some other shows where you can actually see them crying in the front row. So I know it just that it involves music. It's so powerful. That's yeah. kind of the part that pushes it over and really touches people more easily than it might if there's not music, I think. Let's back up for a second, because you are originally from a, a small town. It's called Moscow Mills, Missouri, right. which uh, I looked it up, population 2,509, and you actually grew up on a seven-acre farm. Yeah. So what was that like, man? And did you, how did you decide you're, with music's going to be such a big part of your life? My dad bought the farm when I was about 11, turning 12. He had, we had lived in a small little, you know, subdivision, little backyard, but they always had a garden and they raced, I remember they raised rabbits in this little yard and the neighbors did not like it. I was it. gonna say, yeah. <laughs> so probably not really popular. Poopy smells a little bit. So, but he always wanted some acreage. So this, they came into the seven acre farm, which was uh, about 10 miles from where we used to live. Rocked my world because I had to completely change schools at 12 in oh. the middle of the school year at Thanksgiving. Um, but they started gardening, always had a lot of gardens, um, did some planting of corn and stuff for a bit, but mostly the garden, big gardens, lots of different animals, mainly the rabbits, um, goats. My mom loved goats, so we always had goats, loved the goats, everyone loved the goats, and she bred them, you know, sold them, and some other animals too, but I don't and know. And you still have goats as a pet in the city, is that right? <laughs> no. People do have chickens now, you know, in the I cities. Know, yes. A lot of that. And we had some chickens and some other other animals, cats and dogs. But um, you know, my my parents were musical in the way that my dad sang in church choir when he was a little kid, you know, in the Catholic church choir. Right. And my mom always became. Uh, she really liked the piano, and so that we moved into a house that had a piano. So she and I both were playing. And was that she, your first instrument? That was the first instrument, was a piano. Even though she had a guitar, I was doing piano first. So I took some lessons, you know, played a little bit. Mom was really into church uh, organ choir and everything. So yeah, I just did a little bit in the blood. And then my younger brother and I took off with the guitar, you know, a little later. So did you do the typical, like, sing in the church choir? Or kind of I, I did school choir more. School? school choir, uh, show choir and all the plays at the high school. Oh, nice. And then I wanted to, I knew I wanted to try to pursue, you know, theater or acting in college, so I went and got a, got a, got a theater scholarship, luckily, at, at a school that was just in Iowa, not too yeah, far. Yeah, and, and it was a really cool school. It's called Coe College. It was established in 1831, mm -hmm. and it's a private college, but man, it's really cool because the class sizes are super small and you get really personal attention, right. and bonding. Right, liberal arts, and, yeah. so it was, we didn't have too many things we had to take necessarily, you know? Too, we had a couple of things that you had to take your freshman year and otherwise you took what you needed for your major and then whatever else you want so i took theater and then i thought maybe i should have something else too <laughs> so, and then i majored in theater and psychology so and i felt like they merged pretty well together you know yeah. thinking about the mind and how that works and how people think and how people are affected and react so when you get out of college what do you do after that 
interesting. My, my very best friend who was my roommate is in town just now to see the show, and she was going to law school. She had decided that, and I'm a senior in college, and I'm like, I wonder what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the GRE, and I thought, okay, I guess I'll go to graduate school for psychology. My, the program didn't plan real well for me for post-college for theater. I know a lot of programs do, and I, so I didn't really go that route at first. I went into school psychology. I don't know how I fell into that, but it turned out to be to be a really good decision because I've been able to do a lot of that work contractually and make some money while right, I'm pursuing yeah. this. Yeah. And you went to Loyola, right? You got went to Loyola, from there. yeah. And the reason I went there is because my boyfriend at the time, who was at Co, was younger, but he was from Chicago. So that's how I got here, and I've been here ever since. Wow, cool. Yeah. And we're still friends. <laughs> so you, uh, you're you here and you're working in a school and you're a school psychologist mm -hmm. and uh, rumor has it you start reading uh, The Artist's Way, which a lot of people do, which is mm -hmm. a super cool book yeah. by Julia Cameron. Yeah. And uh, it has this impact on you in which you realize that it's time for you to start pursuing, right, this other side. Yeah, there were a number of things that culminated in that and me deciding I'm going to take a leave from this school and I'm really going to try to pursue, you know, acting. So it was terrifying and... Uh, it's been it was a struggle at, especially at first because I was earning a lot of money I was at a, a school in the North Shore area north of Chicago nice suburb nice nice a lot amount of money nice but um yeah it's all you know ups and downs but here I am at the Paramount in once which I've been wanting to be in for five years so and I will say when you uh, when you started man you've been in a role ever since because You've been at Griffin, in Chicago Shake, Steppenwolf House, Court, Looking Glass, like the list goes on, and you haven't stopped working since that on stuff, just on the theater side. Yeah, you know, it's, cool. it's, there's a few dry periods here and there, right. but it takes a long time, really, to kind of get momentum and get your foot in the door where people will feel like they know you and hire you and start calling you in for auditions. I, I for years, I auditioned for many of these places, and nothing ever happened, and then eventually, you start working for one place that has a certain level of, they all they all sort of know each other, you know? You, like Looking Glass was really the turning point for me, I think, to put me at a level where the other theaters then started calling me in more. And Looking Glass, you did a really cool show there, and it was about Eastland, which is the biggest tragedy in the Great Lakes about the ship that capsized. Yes, it's crazy. This big ship, they put concrete you know, um, levels on it. And then they didn't have enough lifeboats and it just rolled right over, right at the dock on Clark Street. Yeah. 844 people died. Doesn't sound like it would be a good thing for a musical, but it was gorgeous. And that's one of the plays where you could just see people just, just being torn up in the audience. The design was especially beautiful. They hung these beautiful wet clothes and they flew the clothes in. I mean, all wow. these lost souls. Yeah, Looking Glass does an amazing job. They do amazing stuff. Finish. And Tiffany, who plays our girl, yes. played, we were, you know, dressing roommates and we were in that show together and now she's playing my daughter. And six years later and it's really cool to have had that experience together and now be working together in this way. Right on. Well, look, we're going to uh, break this up in part two and come back and talk about some other stuff. So everybody hang loose. More uh, with Jeannie in a second.